Welcome back to another episode of Couches and Cartridge Containers. I'm your host, Cartridge Carl, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a couch. Here's the couch, as well as a cartridge container. How are you guys doing? Joe here. Sorry, I'm an idiot. But this is a SIG Arms. You've seen it on the channel a few times, actually, in some shorts. I haven't gotten around to the full review, and I apologize. Today we are correcting that. SIG Arms is what SIG Sauer used to be called until 2007, I believe. Fact check me in the comments. When they decided to become SIG Sauer. Pretty good company, pretty good track record, current sidearm of the U.S. military with the M17 and M18 variants. This one comes from a time when, well, metal was metal and guns was guns. Well, technically a lot of guns were metal before then, but you know what I mean. Let's take a look at the box first. This is the upgraded Crimson Trace model. Inside here, closed cell foam. This one came with three magazines because we got the one in the gun, show clear. And the two in the box has some lube. Don't know what that's in there for. Maybe if you're having a randy night. The extra grip and these grips that are currently on the gun. These are 229, but I think these are actually off of a double single action. And we'll talk about that in a second. Let's get that out of the way. The 229 came out in 1992 as a supplemental gun to the 228. They are functionally very similar, however their construction methods are quite different. The 229 has a CNC machine stainless steel slide. The 228 and 226 variants have stamped slides. A CNC machine slide allows for higher pressure cartridges to be safely detonated. The breech face back here the entire weight of the slide, as well as the metallurgy and construction of it, allow it to handle the pressure of 357 SIG, which is what this gun was introduced for. 357 SIG is obviously 357 SIG because SIG Sauer or SIG Arms, and this gun was their first introduction of the round. The 228 cannot handle the pressure of a 357 SIG, so do not put a 228 slide on your 229 and expect it to last for a long time. This gun, as you can see from the wear on top of the barrel, has survived a very long time as possibly somebody's sidearm in law enforcement or possibly just as somebody's range gun or ultimate fire gun. One way you can tell whether or not your gun was factory equipped with the Crimson Trace option or the laser grip option, just in case it was a different manufacturer, is it will have a sticker underneath the rail that tells you to be careful because you can put somebody's eye out with the laser. Even though what comes out of the hole in the front is probably a little bit more lethal. Hi, how are you? Looking at the gun itself, very much SIG design elements on here. As I was saying in the beginning, this has, I believe, the double action, single action grips on it because it has a slot cut here for the decocker. This gun is double action only, or as Sig puts it, DAC, which is double action Kellerman, so that this one is technically double action only, but when you do that, you get a partial cocking of the hammer, which does aid in the trigger pull. It doesn't really lighten it, but it does take a little bit out of the pull itself and start you at the wall versus having a little bit of play there. Very nice trigger. We'll talk about that in a minute. But on other versions of this gun, they do have a decocker option. That does mean that when you put a magazine in this gun and you cock it, or rack the slide, if we're going to be pedantic and technical, you will see that the hammer will come back about a quarter of an inch, and the gun is now ready to fire. It's also a good way of knowing whether or not the gun is loaded, as it has no loaded chamber indicators. But, always do that if you're unsure. Has some upgraded True Glow fiber, excuse me, some True Glow fiber optic sights up top. Very nice. One downside to having this style of True Glow is that it does reduce your overall sight picture a little bit. I know that doesn't matter to some people, but I do feel that the upgrade in visibility does compensate for the little bit of loss of sight radius. Slide lock, slide release, and takedown lever. Nothing on the other side. This one is 
a uh, excuse me I almost said it was a chassis system but it is not this one is just a standard style pistol US design US sold so it has the US style mag release on it drop free mags this is easy to tell as a US market gun because there are no serial numbers on the slide or the barrel whereas this Springfield XDM Elite yeah, do that when your hands have no strength. As you can see, it's clear. has markings for the serial number both on the slide and the barrel. That is typical with import guns. They are required. I like suppressor height sights. Just as an aside. Let's talk about the trigger. Trigger pull is, again, double action only, but it's very smooth. Doesn't stage. Doesn't have like weird 10 clicks as you're coming through it. You just pull it and it goes. Reset will set to the quarter cock position of the double action. So it comes back to here. You get that first click. Whereas you can see there, it had a double click going back out to the full front position. And if you just release it, it will always go out to that full front position versus the reset, which gives you your quarter cock, which is a shorter pull. Very nice follow-up shots. Front of the gun is just your standard design. They did some cutouts here, and you'll see why when we take the top off. Overall, a very solid feeling gun. What do you say we pop the chap off and see what's inside of her? Okay. Well, to do that, go ahead and lock her open. Check her one more time. Do the old fingeroo. Oop, almost got my finger stuck in there. That would have been embarrassing. And while it is still in the open position, go ahead and turn your take down lever, lever, however you want to put it, to the down position, and then just take it apart. Non-captive guide rod spring, and it is a large single spring that is kind of out of date nowadays, and I believe there are some upgrades, but as you can see, this, this spring field comes down basically the same. But this is a much more modern style of guide rod and recoil spring. The reason being is that this first spring can be looser and then this one is tighter. So when this one comes all the way back, it will then compress this one, which will give a slower deceleration of the slide versus having one big spring that honestly is not much tighter than this spring. So the felt recoil impulse between that gun and that gun is going to be a noticeable difference. Barrel comes out like that. The finish is worn off of this one. As you can see, this gun has been fired many a time. And it has held up remarkably well. Looking inside the barrel, the rifling is still super strong in there. This is a cold hammer forged barrel. These tend to have a longer service life than a standard, just um, CNC, not CNC, but just a normal stamped style barrel. Uh, much better, much stronger, much longer life. The slide itself has held up remarkably well. The nitride finish is pretty much unmarred outside of like when I drop it like a stupid idiot. Inside, there's a little bit of wear showing that it has had the round count through it. The CNC machined stainless steel is holding up very well, and the finish itself is holding up very well. Has the ubiquitous drop safety or firing pin block, depending on how you prefer to say that. Other than that, the controls inside are very basic. External extractor, however, it does have a pin that goes all the way through the slide. Not a huge fan of that. It's just more annoying if you need to service it. You need to take that out, take that out, take all that out just to change your extractor. It's a little bit more annoying and a bit of a pain in the ass. But if the gun doesn't fail, you don't have to replace parts. Taking a look at the frame, this has full length frame rails in the front. That is pretty impressive to see, it's quite long. This Springfield has overly sized frame rails as well, but as you can see, there's much more contact area on this SIG, which does aid in some rigidity of the slide to frame contact, a little bit of less wiggle side to side. This gun has so many rounds through it that it has worn off some material, so it is a little bit noisier than I would expect. But overall, it supposedly helps with accuracy and recoil impulse. That spring does not. Yeah, let's put her back together. 
grab your slide, grab your barrel. I like to do these upside down. It just makes everything so much easier. He says that he can't get the barrel in. Take your spring and guide rod shover in there. Like she owes you some money. Make sure that the guide rod is sitting level and true. There you go. Otherwise, she'll bind up when you reassemble it. Take it and put the slide back on. Sometimes that spring, you can see it started going on its own, but sometimes it just needs a little bit of assistance. And back in auction. So what do I think of the SIG Arms 229? Well, 357 SIG is a pretty cool round. Uh, the SIG... Excuse me, the Glock 32 that I've showed on the channel a bunch of times was also chambered in 357 SIG. And it's an underrated round that not a lot of people mess with, especially after the COVID and everybody going nuts about having ammo. If you want to check out a SIG 229, don't forget to give Liberty Arms in Harrisonburg a call. We can get them. They are still manufactured. Uh, they're not cheap. A new SIG 229 with the laser option is going to run you about $1,000. But it could be the last carry gun you buy if you prefer something all alloy or all metal like me. It could just be a fun planker, or if you're a SIG completist, and I have a few of those in the viewership who have called our store just to buy our Mark 25s when they came in, this could be another gun for your collection. Let me know your comments down below what you think of this gun. If you have one, how well it shoots for you. I want to see what the accuracy is like. I have no idea what the round count is, but based on the fact that all the finish is off, I'm going to say in the high teens, and I want to see how it compares to a brand new one. So I'm going to take out a new one if I can get my hands on one, this one, and see which one is more accurate. Come back for that. Leave me a comment down below. Thumbs up, all that good stuff. Don't forget to watch the shorts. And as always, I'll talk to you later.